Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all still safe, and it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, so starting. Now I'm trying to add some additional videos, but it's been quite busy on my end. Um, with that said, I hope you had a fantastic new year, and today what I want to show you guys is how we can make use of the Reolink IP cameras. So just so you guys did know, they did send this over to me for the purposes of this video. And there is a very cool integration uh, that we can make use of to integrate this into Home Assistant that allows us to also use this as a motion sensor and not just an IP camera. So with that said, we can quickly go ahead and take a look what's in the box and then we'll show you guys how to set this up in Home Assistant. There we go. So just quickly taking a look at what we're going to get in the box on one of these. So it's fairly straightforward boxing. There's not really a lot to it. So I'm just going to quickly open this up. <coughs> That's it. So it looks like it's fairly packed in here. So first thing is in here, we are going to get the user manual. So I have that. So with the user manual, you're also going to get some stickers that you can stick on. And they come in multiple languages as well. Then the second thing in this box is going to be the a LAN cable or a CAT6 cable. It's a very short one, so I'm not sure how you're going to use this. Um, you're probably going to use something else um, when you're setting this up or installing this. A couple of screws to mount the actual camera. Some cable protectors. And then the last thing in here is going to be the camera itself. So it is fairly heavy, so just taking it out and move over. So there we have it. It's not a lot to it, so not a lot in the box. And one thing to do keep in mind is they do not provide any type of power supply for the camera itself. So we do have a normal 12 volt power that we can provide. And then we also have the PoE Ethernet jack. Now you're also going to use this for signals. So in order to view the information, you're also going to need to connect this to your network. So two ways of powering it. If you do have a PoE switch, you can just directly plug it in or you can power it by 12 volt itself. And then we have the reset switch. So that's pretty much all there is. There's not a really lot to the, to the box itself. Um, so with that said, I'm quickly going to plug this in and then we can take a look. There we go, so back in our Home Assistant installation, everything should still be uh, exactly the same as it was before. So what I'm quickly going to do is I quickly just want to show you an overview of the app. Um, so basically all I just did was I plugged in the IP camera and it's connected to my network and I haven't set up anything else yet. So I'm quickly going to show you guys the options we have available in the app. So I already downloaded it, so I'm going to open up the Reolink app right here and it's going to ask us to um, access our storage. Just say continue. And as soon as I go into the app, as you can see right here, it already tells us that there is a device available, which is camera one. So I don't even have to search for anything or do anything. It just automatically detected there is a device in here that we still need to configure. So what I'm going to do is I'll just click on it and it's going to ask us to create a login. Here is, I'll just give it a quick uh, name, just as a temporary password. There we go. Then we need to give it a name. So mostly this will be where you want to place this camera. Um, I'll just call this Rio. And there we go. And as you see, we have set up this camera. So if I do open up this, you'll see it shows a live preview in the app itself of the camera itself. And I have to say the quality is really good as well. Um, it is currently set to fluent, so it's not even set to max quality. If I do change this up, wow, that looks very, that looks really good. And keep in mind, this is on Wi-Fi, so it may be a bit slower, but as you can see, the quality is really good. But there's, there's not a lot to setting up the app. Um, it didn't ask me to create an account. 
uh, we have nothing specific that we need to do. It literally just opened up the app and we're in here. So one thing we may want to do is we can click on those settings. And as you can see, it does show that there is storage in here. Uh, I already installed an SD card. Um, I didn't show you guys where the SD card slot is. I'll just throw a picture on here to show you guys where you installed this SD card. So if we open up that camera itself, so what I did was I just opened up the settings and it shows us all the settings we have. You can turn on push notifications and email alerts. I haven't tested any of these. This is basically the first time that I just opened up the app. So as a first user experience, we just go in and click on the device and it'll show us all the information in here. Now, one thing that we're definitely going to need to have in here is the IP address. So if we click on the IP address, we just need to remember the IP address that's assigned to this IP camera in order for us to integrate this into our home assistant. So once we have everything in here, I'm going to take a look at that IP address. We can configure the storage. Uh, I'm just going to go in and format this real quick. So there we go. And it should have a clean SD card. There we go. So formatting has been completed. So now we should be able to go back into settings and you'll see that the camera is now empty. So Swear so didn't tell us that it's going to restart the app, but it, uh, the camera, but it, when you format it, when I formatted that SD card, it did in fact format, uh, restart the SD card. So another option in here, you do have the option to share the camera. So I'm definitely not going to display that, but you can share the camera with anyone else. Then as um we do have some audio settings in here as well. So we can say record audio, meaning that it will also record audio from this camera. Then we have reboot the infrared lights. We can always leave that at auto. Uh, that should be fine. Email alert and push notifications. I'm assuming if we enable this, it will trigger a notification each time that there is movement detected on the camera. Uh, the schedule is obviously, if you turn this on, you need to say between which times you would like the auto notifications to trigger. So obviously you don't want this to trigger each and every time there's movement. There may just be certain times of day or night. So the app is very, very, very straightforward to use. Uh, you can do playback or do a clip. So nothing really special to it. It's fairly simple to set up. It didn't ask me to set up an account. So yeah, it didn't ask me to set up an account or anything, so we should be good on that. Um, just remember the IP address, that's the most important part on here. So this camera is now actually set up and good to go. It's it's recording and it's just off the races. So there's nothing really special that we need to change or modify on here. It'll just work. Now to set this up in Home Assistant, we're going to make use of a hacks integration that I found, which is incredible. So in here, you do have the option to just manually go in and edit the configuration of YAML file and just add a stream and your username and password in there and it'll show up as a normal camera in Home Assistant. However, um, if you do have hacks installed, I do have a video showing you how to do this as well. Uh, there is a fantastic integration in here for RioLink. So if I go in here and click on Explore, you should see I have to, I'm going to search for a repository called Rio Link. And as you can see right here, it has a Rio Link IP camera integration. And here, it gives us some information in here. So what we can do is I'm just going to hit install and that will install the, the hacks integration for us. There we go. So once that's installed, as you can see, it is going to require us to do a restart. So we'll just quickly go in and restart Home Assistant as well. There we go. Uh, Home Assistant went ahead and restarts. So once Home Assistant has restarted, that integration should be active. There's not really a lot we, we do after installing it from Hacks. So it's fairly simple. Now we'll go into our configuration in Home Assistant, then click on integrations right here. And then you'll see we do have the option just to right behind my chair. Uh, there's add integration we can click on. And that's going to bring up a new box. And in here, we will now have the option for Rio Link IP camera, as you can see right here. So if we click on it, it's going to ask us a couple of things in here. One thing to keep in mind, I did have to clear my cache for before this iteration did show up. So just keep in mind that uh, you may want to just clear your cache if this integration does not show up.
So host, remember that IP address that I showed in the app that we need to remember? Uh, this is where we're going to type that in. So in my case, it was 81, I think. Then the username, in my case, is going to be admin. And then the password is going to be that password that I gave it. And then once that's in there, we can just hit submit. And that should go in and add the camera to Home Assistant. So it'll, it's going to add a couple of entities in here as well. There we go. So as you can see, it did pick up which camera it is as well. So it's the RLC 14 5 megapixel. It's one of the cheapest cameras in the range, which is a fantastic value if you do ask me. Um, with that you're getting so it's asking us to which area we want to add this to uh if you want to add it to an area so i'll just go in and say living room for now hit finish and there we go so as you can see we have reolink camera it's one device and seven entities so that one device just created seven entities in home assistant so instead of just being a normal ip camera it created a bunch of additional entities that we can we can use so there we go. This is all the entities that it added to our Home Assistant installation. This is just for the one camera that I added in. So obviously you can go in and add multiple cameras. As you can see, it did pick up the name of that camera as well. So I just called it Rio. So everything is listed in here. I'm not going to show you guys a lot in here. Um, the most important ones that we'll probably use is going to be the motion. And then obviously the camera itself as well. So there are some additional functionality. Uh, you can go through the hacks documentation. I'll leave a link in the description as well to the GitHub page um, for this specific integration. However, just to show you guys that it is working, we can go in and just add this to our Lovelace dashboard. So I just created a new dashboard here real quick. So in the dashboard, we can just go in and add that camera in here. Sorry, I just use a blank dashboard just so I don't have that background to keep on playing. So. I'll click on add a card, then we can go down and we can find a picture glance, for example. Camera entity, we can just type in the name of that camera right here. As you can see, it shows the Rio already. And I'm just going to leave these blank. I don't need to have anything in there. Hit save. And now we have the Rio Link IP camera in Home Assistant. So this is going to work the same with the, uh, sorry, my resolution is a bit off. But this will work the same with the integration with the motion sensor. Obviously, it'll just pick up as a normal motion sensor. So if we go in here and add a card, we should be able to search for a normal motion sensor uh, entity. So we we'll just use entities, for example. And then I can go in and search for the rear link motion sensor hit save and there we go so as you can see obviously it is detecting movement because I'm like right here in front of the camera but if I do cover this up uh, it would stop and not detect any movement so that is a really cool feature so instead of just having a camera you actually do have a camera with the motion detection, which can do, you can do so much more automations with this. Um, um, the possibilities are quite uh, expanded than to just have a normal IP camera. And there you have it, guys, how to add a real link IP camera to Home Assistant. It's extremely simple to set up. Once you have Axe installed, it's literally just click a few buttons, add in the IP address, and you're good to go. I have to say, I'm very impressed with these cameras. Uh, as towards, I don't really have a lot of different cameras, so I used to have just the analog cameras, but these ones are like on a next level when it comes to quality. It's, you can't really compare it. One good thing about it, it did not ask me to create an account of any type. As you guys saw, I did it through the straight setup. I never used the app or anything before. I literally just did it live to show you guys it is fairly simple to use. Uh, but with that said, if you guys do have any questions or you do get stuck, the setup is fairly simple. I would be happy to assist you in any way I can. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week.